conventional definition of an aneurysm uh, is an artery dilated one and a half times its expected diameter, and that works actually pretty well for the abdominal aorta and the descending thoracic aorta, but it's long been recognized that it doesn't really work for the aortic root and the ascending aorta. So a 40-year-old male is expected to have an aortic root diameter somewhere around three and a half centimeters, but uh, if you use that definition, uh, it would have to be 5.25 centimeters in diameter before you'd uh, call it an aneurysm, and obviously that's pretty big. And so there has been a recent change, uh, which we wanted to highlight, in the size threshold for repair of thoracic aortic aneurysms, and I wanted to kind of go over some of the evidence to support that. Uh, and so it's a, the bottom one there, the 2A recommendation. So in asymptomatic patients with aneurysms of the aortic root or ascending aorta who have a maximum diameter of greater than 5 centimeters, surgery is now considered reasonable when performed by experienced surgeons in a multidisciplinary aortic team. Uh, so again, it has to be in patients that uh, uh, have low surgical risk. Uh, individual surgeons have to have excellent and institutional outcomes that are great. Uh, and there's actually a randomized controlled trial that's enrolling patients right now called the Titan SVS Surgery versus Surveillance, uh, which is looking at patients that have an ascending thoracic aortic aneurysm 5 to 5.4 centimeters, and they're randomizing them to observation versus early surgery. Uh, and so this will finally give us some randomized data to help, um, you know, probably change the guidelines again in the future. This was a, a nice table here that uh, I'll kind of break down uh, very quickly, but uh, it says bicuspid aortic disease, but it also can apply to tricuspid aortic disease as well. Uh, essentially, if you have a root or an ascending aneurysm and you need to do an aortic valve replacement uh, in those patients, uh, if it's greater than four and a half centimeters in size, it's a class 2A recommendation, go ahead and replace the aorta. Uh, if they have a greater than five and a half centimeter, uh, it's a, which is the far left, clearly a 1B recommendation, replace the aorta. Uh, if you have somebody who's got a height uh, or cross-sectional area, the height ratio greater than 10, it's a 2A indication that it's reasonable in low-risk patients in the multidisciplinary center uh, to replace the ascending aorta at that size. When we get into the smaller aneurysms, uh, there's some suggestion that you should, in this 5 to 5.4 centimeters, if they have a risk factor, uh, it may be a 2A indication or it is a 2A indication to uh, offer operative repair to those patients. Other reasons for why the fate of the change, uh, why we're changing it to a 2A recommendation for selective repair in 5 centimeter ascending or rear aneurysms. And so this is from the uh, uh, group at Yale. Uh, John Aleftariotides has spent his career looking at uh, patients with ascending and root aneurysms and has a massive database uh, that he's collected over the last 40 years of where they've looked at patients, including those in this study, of where they did not offer operation and they just followed those patients out over time. And again, uh, what we see is that uh, below five centimeters, very low risk of dissection, uh, rupture, or death, uh, or any type of aortic event. But once you kind of hit the uh, five centimeter, 5.4 centimeter range, we start to see an increase in the risk of uh, untoward aortic events. And so what are some of the uh, contemporary results on surgery of the aortic root or ascending aorta? Uh, this was a paper published a couple years ago looking at elective aortic root replacements in North America, looking at the STS adult cardiac surgery database. Uh, and so this was 8,800 uh, patients who underwent an elective aortic root replacement. So they got rid of everybody that had a type A dissection, endocarditis, urgent surgery, redo operations, if they had an aortic arch surgery, uh, or if they had to go under uh, or undergo circulatory arrest. And so this is really just truly uh, a clamped, a uh, single clamp and uh, repairing the or replacing the aortic root. Uh, a third of those patients had a bicuspid valve. Uh, only 3.7% had Marfan syndrome. Uh, they did include patients that uh, had a single uh, valve, uh, which typically would be the aortic valve in that situation, or a mitral valve. Uh, if they had AFib surgery or if they had uh, coronary bypass, uh, all of those patients were included as well. And the in-hospital or 30-day operative mortality for an aortic root replacement in the United States was only 2.2%. So, you know, uh, in general, uh, we would do a really good job of uh, picking the right patients and getting them through aortic root surgery, a low risk of renal failure and reoperation for bleeding. So in terms of physical activity and quality of life, uh, we're starting to enter the data-free zone here. Uh, and so basically, uh, heavy weightlifting uh, with Valsalva can produce acute increases in systolic pressure greater than 300 millimeters of mercury. 
And so um, one story of a, a book I read from uh, John Left Heriotides, uh, his son was a uh, high school student uh, putting together a, a project for uh, the science fair. And uh, his dad came up with the idea, well, we really don't know anything at all about exercise uh, and what it happens uh, to your blood pressure uh, acutely with heavy weightlifting. And so he got together a bunch of his friends and they actually sterilely put femoral arterial lines in them. Uh, and they got them on a weight bench and they then had them lift varying degrees of weight. And you could see acute spikes in your blood pressure up to 300. And so he wrote all this up. Uh, I think he got a B uh, in the uh, paper is what, uh, what his dad says in the book. And then subsequently they published it in the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association. So take that, take that science teacher. Um, so an absolute weight limit has not really been defined. And so in general, uh, we, at least I personally say kind of 50 to 100 pounds is probably the maximum uh, that you want patients to lift acutely that have aortic disease. Um, mild or moderate aerobic activity is safe, uh, but again, we're, we're kind of data-free in, in many of these uh, 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 areas.